There is another update that Jagex has published this morning on project rebalance item and combat adjustments. So we're just going to get straight into this bad boy, everybody. All right, blog update Thursday, April 18th. That is today. To say this set of changes sparked a lot of discussion would be putting it lightly. Let's not waste any time and take a look at some frequent feedback points and some changes to our proposal. So let me just say right off the bat there, I have just lightly reviewed this and I've seen some of the replies on the Twitter thread that Jagex posted. So um, I do have some thoughts already ready and I really wanna hear from you guys. So down in the comment section, let me know what you guys all think about this stuff. I obviously have some hot takes potentially. Also drop a like on the video if you enjoy it and let's just keep going. Okay, so magic damage redistribution. Feedback. Magic setups outside of high-end endgame gear were hit disproportionately hard by the nerf to the occult necklace. Additionally, there were concerns expressed about balance between brackets and PvP with how much power limited defense builds were losing compared to others. We've rejigged some numbers and added some equipment into the mix. Our hope here is that power levels for many players should stay around or slightly above where they were at previously but that it's made up of, of more diverse sources and encourages meaningful upgrades across slots at various points in a player's journey. Okay, so let's take a look at what they've changed. And I, I already know this is good stuff. So plus one to Aram. So let me, let's just see what all the plus one is. So plus one to Aram's, Elder Chaos Druid pieces, Blood Moon pieces, and Blood Bark. Ancestral pieces were at 4% according to the latest blog, but now they are gonna be 3%. So 3% each, 2% to Eternal Boots, that's up from zero, two to Mystic Might and one to Mystic Lore, which is exactly what I wanted to see. That's amazing. So, and Augury is still staying at 4% as we'll see. So that's really cool. So like the, the first Mystic Will prayer doesn't have any special bonuses. I would even say that they could put that to like a 0.5, but it literally would do nothing. So it's just like, whatever. So yeah, 1% to Mystic Lore, 2% to uh, Mystic Might, 2% um, to Mage's Book, 2% to Malediction Ward, and 2% to Ancient Wyvern Shield, 3% to Arcane Spirit Shield. And now they are going down the route of doing the 0.5s, because we do have a 0.5% to Seer's Ring. And then we have a 2.5% to elite void mage totaling five percent up from 2.5 percent interesting okay so that's fine obviously the 0.5 percentages don't really mean much unless you're just you know continually adding on to your mage strength so uh, those 0.5s will make a difference at some point so very cool i'm actually very happy with this now i do uh, i will obviously have some things to say so especially in regards to eternal boots so we'll get there just let me finish this up We'd also like to clarify that Virtus Robes would have a plus 15% boost to Ancient Magics, up from plus 12%. This boost is made up of two stats. It's base magic damage and an added magic damage for Ancients. So increasing its base magic damage by 3% will increase its mag uh, Ancient Magics boost by the same amount. Here's a handy summary image. Okay, there we go. Looking good. And for some at-a-glance examples of some pieces of gear and how they stack up. So... Yeah, basically, Mystic Might, Eternal Boots, Mage's Book, Aram's Occult is plus three compared to the live game right now. Augury plus Eternal Boots plus Ancestral plus Occult is plus three percent compared to the live game right now. Uh, Tumican Shadow, remember, only gains one percent over the live game since it loses three percent from gear. So again, this is assume this is because Augury is not going to give it a multiple multiplicative effect of times three for the prayers. So that's cool. Mystic Might and Elder Chaos Robes plus Mage's Book plus Occult is 1% compared to the live game. Okay, cool. So let me just say this right now because this is like one of the first kind of replies I would see on the Twitter threads is like, oh my God, like you're actually going to touch Eternals now. Now my setups for everything are going to be fucking wonky or else I'm going to be losing max hits. And there is some... I'm just trying to think of how to do this because... In my personal opinion, I don't actually mind slight potential DPS losses if it's good for the game. 
that's just my personal opinion so like if if all of a sudden eternals now are going to be losing your losing you dps if you're not wearing that i i actually don't think that's a problem at all but i will say and this is actually coming from the bc guppy cast where he was talking about his like whole glove uh it's like thanos glove uh, mega rare idea which was way too op but i understand toward the end of what he was saying i kind of started to understand why he thought of that as a mega rare in the first place and that was because usually doing more than an eight-way switch is just obnoxious like eight-way switches are generally the maximum you can have and feel good about it like feel like it's not just your items are everywhere so of course anything less than that's also optimal like obviously six-way switches are really nice four ways um but as soon as you go beyond an eight-way switch you're just like it's just a kind of like a mess and it takes several ticks to switch into your full gear and it's just kind of a mess and i wonder what the community thinks about that like as some sort of i mean because one of the things i saw on reddit as well was like somebody was saying why not at this point just combine the cerberus boots some ha have some way of like combining all three cerberus boots into one boots so that boot switches are no longer a thing that's really where it came from it wasn't just for power creep sake it was just for the idea of not having to switch boots um and bc guppy's whole concept was under the assumption basically that you're not going to be having to do any glove switches or ring switches and if you don't know what i'm talking about basically he had this whole idea of like a thanos glove that comes out from raids four and it can hold rings in it and everything so it's going to be your best in slot gloves for all styles and because it can hold rings it's going to be obviously your best in slot for rings because you can't actually equip additional rings and have its effect while equipping this glove so basically it's restricting um gear swaps but you're still going to have maximum gear dps so it's kind of an interesting concept. I don't know how I exactly feel about it. There's obviously some downsides to it that I can already think of, but there are some upsides. And it's just weird. Like right now, so with this Eternal Boot switch, uh, some people are annoyed about it because they didn't ever have to really do a boot switch if they were using like magic and melee, but now they kind of have to. They're kind of forced to if they want to get that extra DPS. So... I don't know. I just really don't think it's that big of a deal. But in the future, it would be kind of cool to address some of these concerns and maybe start combining certain things. Potentially, again, this is like an open discussion. So I'd love to hear what you guys have to think about all this. Anyway, minimum hit changes. Feedback. Reducing max hits across the game to introduce minimum hit improvements for new players doesn't feel great. Also, Dragon Claws and the Scythe of Viter were worse off with this proposal due to how they handle rounding. Okay, so we're adjusting our proposal for minimum hits. Instead, any damage roll that would be a zero will be clamped up to a one. Max hits would be left unchanged from what they are in the live game. This achieves our early game goals of making combat feel better, but doesn't lead to a significant or noticeable game-wide DPS increase in high-end setups. For example, if your max hit is a three, your damage distribution would be a one, one, two, three, rather than zero, one, two, three. This is a slight buff to DPS in the very early stages of the game, but is much less impactful as max hit uh, max hits increase. So we steer clear of end game concerns. Note that you'll still be able to miss, so you'll still see the occasional zero, especially against high defense NPCs or in the very early stages of the game. So I just want to say this real quick. I this is obviously better than what they had previously proposed, but I still don't like it. That's just my honest feedback i don't like it at all i don't like that we're going to be hitting double one we're going to be hitting ones twice as commonly as all other numbers for some reason that just pisses me off like <laughs> just I, I it's not even in the game yet but i can already imagine myself just getting pissed off seeing ones because you're just going to be seeing ones twice as often so i don't know like why like is it does any actual player this is what I'm really concerned about because it seems like the team is very, very careful about the DPS. But usually the team is careful because they know the community is, you know, going to be freaking out if they change something. But seriously, is there a singular player right now that actually cares if they were to just wipe out zeros entirely and just make it so, yes, you get that marginal DPS increase of no zeros, but you're not duplicating that zero into a one? Like, 
can we just not have the whole, like, I don't know if it's like engine work. Maybe it's harder for them to do it. Maybe it takes more time to get rid of that. I doubt it, but maybe that's part of the problem. But seriously, can we just not have this additional one? Like, come on. <laughs> like, I don't know. It just bothers me. It bothers me so much that if, if you can hit a three as your max hit, then it's not just one, two, or three. It's one, one, two, and three. That is just so irritating to me. It's so annoying. Like that, I, I don't know why it's so annoying to me. It just is. And hitting a one, it's just going to feel like every time you hit a one now in any style, in any situation, it. I feel like there's going to be like something subconscious, at least in my head, that's just going to be like pissed off that I hit a one again. Like, oh, well, that was the zero. Like, I don't know. I, I know this isn't that big of a deal, but it is for me. This really is a big deal. And I really like, so I just want to know down in the comments, let me know, th does anyone actually care if they were to just remove the zeros? Like entire, like the, the zeros are gone. They're not getting clamped up the one. They're just eliminated. So you still have the one to your max hit. And that's just that. If you have a successful roll, it's between one and the max hit. There's not a duplicate one in there just to kind of tone down the extra dps i don't th do like does n i don't know i'm i'm having a freak out right now i'm having a literal meltdown but i am genuinely bothered by this solution if it comes into the game like this i'm gonna try not to lose any sleep by it but it's just gonna piss me off until the end of time because it just doesn't feel right it feels unnatural it's unnatural <laughs> stop duplicating the ones like jesus christ oh that's so irritating it's so bothersome. Anyway, I'm just losing it. But let me know what you guys think. Am I going crazy? Uh, maybe it's my OCD. It probably is. Void Waker special attack. So I do have some thoughts on this as well, according to some people that have said stuff in like on Twitter and stuff. Or on X, I should say. Void Waker's proposed special attack leaves it with barely any use cases compared to the Zarite Crossbow or Dragon Claws. We're adjusting our proposal for the Void Waker special attack. Our initial proposal suggested plus 200% accuracy on the special attack, which is the same as 3x accuracy. We'd like to boost this to 400% or 5x accuracy. What this means is that the Void Waker remains an extremely accurate weapon and retains more of its current use cases, but allows us to design NPCs in the future that might feature extremely high slash defenses and open the door for DPS special attacks that focus on other melee styles like Stab or Crush. So I'm going to just share my thoughts on the whole Void Waker thing. I have been convinced by um, the community that the Void Waker should not be changed in any uh, in any way. I, uh, I remain pretty indifferent on this whole point. I think the 5x accuracy is already good enough. But ultimately, the more we're just like, because what, what what's the difference between like 5x accuracy now and like maybe, may, you know, 8x accuracy? Like, why not just make it super, 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 super accurate? But you still have a chance of hitting a zero. At this point, I would just say keep it as is because it really, the community has made it very clear that they like a guaranteed spec weapon. And I don't think there's any places where it's breaking the game. In fact, I think it's just really, really fun to use knowing you're going to guarantee hit. And I actually, I was like thinking about this just in my head on, on one of my walks last night and just thinking there is really not that big of a deal of having the occasional zero and just guarantee hitting like the very 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 rare zero i should say and just like just guarantee hitting like i honestly don't think it's that big of a problem if in the jagex's mind they're thinking well this is going to eliminate potential more like you know more spec weapons in the future why not just have like if you're gonna if you're wanting to come out with another spec weapon that's super accurate as well like the void waker just make it guaranteed as well i feel like guaranteed hits actually do just feel fucking good like they just feel good and i feel like the overwhelming community thinks the same. So my personal opinion is just leave the Void Waker as is, honestly. I don't think it's actually eliminating any special attack weapons in the future at all because claws aren't a guaranteed hit and claws are usually the spec weapon you bring in the first place. And Void Waker really is just for those tanky, tanky, tanky guys. And there's still tons of room to introduce a new spec weapon in the future that is still guaranteed max hits against tanky, tanky, tanky guys. And maybe it's just not magic based. Maybe it's some other thing. Maybe it's a, a range based spec, or maybe it's still a melee weapon, but it's something like, I don't know, it hits twice or something. So it's even more consistent or some other thing. I don't, I don't know what it could be, but basically like just, 
I don't think it's a problem to keep the Void Waker as is, especially the fact that we're just continually buffing and buffing and buffing its accuracy. Like, like literally, what would be the difference between 5x and 10x? Just, just make it so it's guaranteed. My personal opinion. Nightmare loot table. This, this one pisses me off so bad. <laughs> so I'm gonna, I'm about to say some words. Feedback: The time to complete uh, Nightmare slash Vasani's Nightmare, particularly the particularly the Inquisitor's armor set. Why are they saying particularly the Inquisitor's armor set? Like that is the most common thing you're getting. It's still extremely long after the changes. Okay, there I am. I'm a, okay. I'm going to get a piece of my mind, but I need to read this whole thing first. I'm just going to read the whole thing. For this one, we'd like to propose rolling out dupe protection to Inquisitor's armor pieces only. There are pros and cons to dupe protection system, so we want to be clear that this is something we'll explore on an extremely case-by-case -case basis and is not something we're looking to roll out to everything in the game. The pros For, for pros, the time to complete for collection loggers and irons go down, but the number of uniques entering the game remains unchanged and doesn't adversely impact the economy for mains. Systems like this allow us to make stuff that's really rare and worth getting excited about without making a complete armor set or log slot feel like a months long slog. The primary con is that systems like this in other places fundamentally change how players interact with their grinds. For example, if General Grardor had due protection for all three armor pieces, would you still try making money there if you knew your next piece was going to be Bandos Boots? Systems like this can disincentivize players to engage with content as money makers, or on a more iron-esque journey if the next unique is already known. In the case of the Inquisitor's armor set, the pieces maintain a similar value to each other for the time being, and we feel this has the most direct applications of Nightmare's uniques, so we'd be willing to experiment with this while leaving the orbs and ex as exceptionally rare flex items. What the fuck? What the, wh what the fuck is this last little bit of this, genuinely? We'd like we'd be willing to experiment with this while still leaving the orbs as exceptionally rare flex items. What who the fuck cares if they're flex items at this point? Jesus Christ. Like, what is happening? Am I losing my mind? Like, why the fuck would you like even say that in there? Like, the orbs are so stupidly rare. Like, nobody like, yes, okay. I'll grant them that, yes, they're flex items clearly because they're just fucking rare i guess but why do they need to be rare why do we need to have flex items like in nightmare especially especially now that there are elemental weaknesses like there are elemental weaknesses coming out and the harmonized orb is now like a very it should be a very very special item to bring in a lot of places and it is just it's just like stupidly rare just out of control rare even with their proposed changes it's still going to be a one in two thousand one hundred sixty drop from fasani's to get it on rate two thousand one hundred and sixty like what the hell is that fasani's nightmare for most people takes around 10 minutes to kill and that's gonna, and that's just saying, you know, no deaths, no anything, you know, you're getting in and out really quickly. Ten full minutes, basically, of just getting kills. So six kills an hour. Yeah, that is not good, like at all. That's that's. I mean, if you were to maintain that, I mean, you're still looking at nearly four hundred hours. Nearly four hundred hours, like three hundred sixty hours ish, to get. A, a specific orb 360 hours to get a specific orb and if you go two times rate two times rate is so common you're now looking at like 700 plus hours to get an orb that really should be something you can reasonably obtain i feel like especially again with the elemental changes so why is there such a like so if they're if they're so set on like oh it's so cool that we have these rare flex items of these orbs you know that's that's so awesome but then they're like, oh, but, oh, you know, like Inquisitor's Armor is still so extremely rare. Like we, def we definitely need to add some dupe protection. I am completely against dupe protection in this system. Dupe protection, uh, I think it was tedious on Twitter that was saying like dupe protection when they're untradeable. Like untradeable dupe protection makes perfect sense. Because you're not trading it and it's just like whatever. So like outfit pieces and stuff like that. Um, you know, Perilous Moons, they added the whole dupe protection thing which I don't really have a problem with, but 
that I mean that that came into the game like that. So there was no um I don't know. And it feels like like Moons of Peril is different than other pieces of content because it really is just like getting Barrows pieces. And it's like every kind of piece is the same rarity and they all kind of are around the same price ish and it feels kind of like a mini game almost. Like I don't know. There's like a there's a difference. I could go into that in like a different ramble, kind of talk about the distinctions of it. But it's not like I'm fully against dupe protection, but this is like not a great place. It's it, I don't think it's ever going to be warranted to bring out dupe protection into previous pieces of um, content. It just makes things really wonky. Like how how are you even going to like I I I guess I can understand how they're going to code this, but is it just for your first set? Like so so is is this basing off of what your collection log looks like? So you know, your collection log shows that you have a skirt and then uh, like a halberd, and now your next one's guaranteed to be a helmet. And then what about after that? Like now are you still on that dupe protection thing where you're going to have to, you're, you're going to get a full completed set again before getting like a third piece of another one? Like I, I'm just wondering like how is the system even going to work out? Anyway, I'm really against this. I just think and I am going to once again just hammer down on this point like so hard is that we need to make extreme changes to Nightmare, like extreme drop changes to Nightmare. The ones they've proposed are not enough at all, like literally at all. Let me just scroll down here and show where the original thing is for it. Um, nightmare, okay, so literally the orb table, is they're changing it so it's a one in 720. Can we please, way increase that just way increase it make it 360 at like the bare minimum make it one in 360 to roll the orb table that's not a specific orb that's an orb table so it's still going to be looking at a one in 1080 for a specific orb that's already still so ridiculous but at least it'll put this all in a good spot and it'll make it so there is a reasonable chance that when you complete inquisitors you have a few orbs, potentially even all three of them. There is a chance of that. Right now, it's like we're going to be getting four fucking Inquisitor sets, basically, before you know we complete our orbs. Like, the the dupli... Like, okay, there's something else to be said as well up above when we start talking about what they're proposing for the Inquisitor's armor, but you, they're already proposing to buff Inquisitor's armor. So we don't need the dupe protection because Inquisitor's now like literally has some use... And I'm going to propose some additional use, as I proposed in the previous rambles. But I don't even think that stuff needs to be changed. Like, seriously, what, they, what they've proposed for the Nightmare staff and armor table as, you know, going from 1 in 200 to 1 in 150, that's probably fine. I would probably argue go down to, like, 1 in 120, personally. But 1 in 150 is fine as long as they drastically improve this orb table. The orb table is what needs looking at. The orb table literally needs to go to a one in 360 at the minimum. Just make it, if, if, if nothing else were to be changed right here, just make the orb table one in 360 and then, you know, whatever the respective rate is for normal nightmare, although like hardly anybody's killing normal nightmare. Also, this is just a side tangent. Can we actually make normal nightmare worth doing? Like... Or are we not? I mean, seriously, like there's like genuine, like annoying distinctions between Nightmare and Fasani's. One of them is like the husks hit you no matter what, even if you're praying the right thing. And also, isn't there still chip damage or something going on in normal? I haven't killed normal Nightmare in so long. Isn't there literally still chip damage? And isn't like the normal Nightmare fight just a literal abomination? Like it's just actually so triggering killing that thing. Like, Fasani's is actually more fun and easier, in my opinion, than killing, like, the normal night. Like, if you were to do a solo normal nightmare versus a solo Fasani's, Fasani's is genuinely easier. It's just so weird. Anyway, that's a, that's a, just delete normal nightmare, honestly, and just let us mass, don't let us mass Fasani's, but there was a good idea from, I think it was Guppy. We're just talking about, like, just imagine we just got rid of normal nightmare entirely, just got rid of that this that fight and instead replaced the upstairs pool where you enter into Fasani's and put that in the middle and so now all we have is Fasani's nightmare and we can just rebrand it as nightmare and 
it's just that this it's the Fasani's fight in the middle of the room. We've entirely removed the other bullshit, and now you can go into Fasani's with up to like four or five people. I would even say just like up to four. So you can go in with your buddies. The, all the scaling is still all the same, so it's going to be a super super easy fight. But you're in with your with your boys. Drop rates are all still the same, and it just rolls just as percentage of how much damage you did. Boom, there you go. And obviously there would need to be some coding done in there because if you're doing like a mass or, or uh, you're doing actually I don't know if there would need to be that much coding done because the only thing I'm really thinking is like husks and parasites. But imagine you could just go in there and there still is just one parasite that comes out per phase and one of the husks that traps one of your teammates. Like I don't even think that would be a big deal. I think it would actually be kind of cool to be able to go into what would be rebranded as just normal nightmare and just still have the Fasani's fight. And then just be able to go that go in there with like four people. I don't know. That's my personal opinion on it. I think that would actually be kind of fun. But I don't know. What do you guys think? Anyway, orb table is what needs to be seriously looked at. And the jar. The jar is a one in 4,000 right now. Just to, I'm just going to repeat that. One in 4,000. It takes 4,000 Fasanis to go rate right for that jar of dreams. That is unbelievably stupidly rare that thing should be like a one in 1000 honestly so I, I said that in another ramble but orb table so overall thoughts tldr is make it so there's no duplicate no dupe protection get rid of that don't have the dupe protection i am totally okay with the whole inquisitor's pieces slash nightmare staff table being improved to even a one in 120 i think that's totally valid i think that would be great but one in 150 works for me and then the orb table needs to be one in 360 it just needs to that needs to be at least double the um drop rate than it is right now that they're proposing it just needs to it needs to be at least double it so one in 360 at the minimum and i don't even know what the mace drop rate is but the mace is probably still fine although i would say you know all oh right is inquisitor's piece is that is that including the mace is that including the mace is the mace part of this maybe it isn't part of this or i think it is i, I can't remember the whole thing but yeah the, if the mace the mace should also be getting a buff so if this is included in that buff chance then that's good anyway that's all i'm going to say about that because i'm getting a headache <laughs> but yeah that's just my personal take on all that so let me know what you guys think Okay, Inquisitor's Mace slash Armor. Another kind of repeat that I'm going to be saying. So feedback, the Inquisitor's Mace buff being dependent on a full set doesn't help its utility on Slayer tasks. Yep, that was one thing I failed to address in other rambles, so I'm glad they, they brought that up. Including boss tasks like Cerberus or the Grotesque Guardians. We're updating our proposal for this, similar to what we've done in the past for Crystal Armor and its passive effects. Instead of relying on the full set, each piece of Inquisitor's Armor will provide a 2.5% damage and accuracy when used in conjunction with the Inquisitor's Mace, meaning you can still benefit from this buff while on task. Okay, again, literally just get rid of Scythe's Crush bonus. Uh, or Crush, uh, well, well, Crush bonus and Crush style. Get rid of, let the Scythe not be able to crush. So the Scythe no longer crushes and the Inquisitor's Armor now... Let's just say the Inquisitor's Armor now has 2.5% accuracy and damage per piece. There it is across the board. All crush weapons get that buff. So if you're using, if you're rocking full Inquisitors, the 7.5% accuracy and damage goes to all crush weapons that you're using, including the mace. Because the mace is already the best crush weapon anyway, if you're looking at just pure crush. Um, and every other crush bonus is getting that nice, or every other crush weapon is giving, giving that bleh, Every single crush weapon is getting that nice bonus as well. And the the scythe will not be benefiting from it because you're just going to get rid of the, the scythe crush. I think it opens up so many more potential use cases for crush weapons if you get rid of the option for scythe to be able to do that. Again, I said that there are some downsides to that, but ultimately the pros outweigh the cons in my opinion. So... Honestly, that's what I would say. I, I do not like this at all. That only the Inquisitor's Mace gets that. Like, what the hell is that? Seriously, what is that? Like, that's just so odd. It's so weird. 
Just make it so it's 7.5% for every crush weapon. And then just make sure the scythe doesn't crush anymore. Literally solves everything. Like, I'm, I'm trying to think of, is there, can somebody leave a comment down? Like, of, am I missing something? Is that, like, not appropriate? Like, I feel like that's just so unbelievably reasonable. And it just makes perfect sense. I don't know. That's me, I guess. Elder Maul special attack. Feedback. The Elder Maul special attack accuracy is still pretty low and not much better than the Dragon Warhammers. We'd like to give an extra plus 25% accuracy to the special attack of the Elder Maul. Yeah, I don't really mind this at all. Um, again, if they were to make the Inquisitor's armor actually 7.5% accuracy and damage to all crush weapons, then the Elder Maul and the Dragon Warhammer would also get a little teeny buff to their special attacks, which is just perfect. Like, that makes perfect sense. So anyway, yeah, I'm I'm okay with the Elder Maul being better than a Dragon Warhammer in every situation because it is a mega rare ultimately. Um, I don't even think this is necessary to be honest, like the plus 25% accuracy, but I'm not against it at all. So whatever. And yeah, just make it so the Inquisitor's armor gives 7.5% damage and accuracy to all crush weapons. Path of Atmakin, some players wanted clarity on how Baboon, Shamans, Volatile Baboons, and Cursed Baboons would be impacted by the Path of Atmakin changes. The likes of Baboon, Shamans, Volatile Baboons, and Cursed Baboons are treated as regular NPCs with no style-specific max hit weaknesses. Though some of you jumped into the beta and tried this one out, we'd like to clarify that the HP for these NPCs no longer scale with raid level, freeing you up to zoom to your heart's content. We're still on the lookout for more feedback and expect to revisit or add more to this uh, feedback table as time goes on. Okay. So that's it for the time being. Interesting. So yeah, those are my overall thoughts on the whole thing. Just again, just to reiterate, minimum hit changes, get rid of the duplicate one. Just get rid of that shit. I don't like it. Void Waker, just scrap the whole Void Waker. Uh, again, these are all my own opinions. So just let me know down in the comments what you guys think. Just make it so the Void Waker is still as is, just how we've always had it. Nightmare loot table, the orbs need to be increased. Don't have dupe protection, but the orbs need to be drastically increased, including the Jar of Dreams. Um, it would literally just make Vasani's Nightmare so much more fun to grind if you could actually get stuff a lot more commonly. And I know they've already made some adjustments, but it needs to be way more than that. And the orbs specifically need to be way more common, at least double. Um, as I just said, Inquisitor's Armor, just make it across the board 7.5% damage and accuracy, so 2.5% per piece uh, worn, and that goes for all crush weapons, not just the Nightmare, uh, or not just the Inquisitor's Mace. Get rid of Scythe crush bonus. Elder Maul's fine, Path of Atmakin looks fine, so... Anyway, oh yeah, I'm also okay with the whole Eternal Boot thing. I, I actually am okay with this. I think it's fine. And I like what they've changed for all this, honestly. Looks nice. So, again, we could have a separate discussion about just, like, gear swaps and trying to have a clean eight-way switch and not be not feel like you're losing out on DPS. Because I will say, having to full-on bring, if you really want to maximize your DPS with magic, especially if you're using, like, a shadow or something, having to literally bring, like, a, a nine-way or a ten-way switch just to maximize everything, it just seems pretty obnoxious. And there are, could be some discussions behind that. So we'll talk about that in the future. But thank you guys all for listening. As always, drop a like if you enjoyed it. Drop a comment. I want to know what you guys all think. And I'll catch you boys in the next one. Peace.